Hi, now welcome to a continuation of this revision exercise I set earlier where in this video we're going to look at factorizing 5, 6 and 7. So for the first one, number 5 here then, always look to see when you're factorizing anything is there a common factor, a highest common factor? Well indeed there is, okay? There's a 3 that's common to each of these four terms. So we put a 3 outside of a bracket. So what have you got to multiply 3 by to get each of these terms? Well it's going to be a squared for the first term, then minus 2ac, and then plus ab, and finally minus 2bc. If you multiply 3 with each of these terms you get these four terms here. Now it's not fully factorized because if we look at this factor here we notice that we can group the terms. We can factorize by grouping. Okay, Put a square bracket and on this pair of terms we've got a which is a common factor. So you pull this out in front of a bracket and you would have a minus 2c inside. So you get a squared minus 2ac, these two terms. And for these two terms you can pull out a common factor of plus b. So if you put plus b in front of a bracket you're going to have another a for ab and then minus 2c. So b times minus 2c is minus 2bc. Don't forget to square that bracket off. Now inside here you have two terms and each of these two terms consists of a common factor, a minus 2c. So if that's the case, we can pull out a minus 2c along with the 3 as a common factor. So if we do that, we have a minus 2c. Now a minus 2c is being multiplied by the a, so we have a bracket and put a there. So a minus 2c times a gives us that term. And then in this term we have a minus 2c times plus b, so we just need to put plus b there. Called factorizing by grouping, so you can always go on my website and check that uh, concept out. Okay, well none of these factors factorizes any further, so this is now fully factorized. Now for number 6 then, again what we do is we look first of all to see whether there's any common factors and there are. Okay, There's a 3 that goes into the 30, the 3 and the minus 9 and there's also an x which is the highest common factor for x cubed, x squared and x. So in all we've got 3x as the highest common factor. So we now need to have a bracket and in here would go 10x squared and then plus x and then minus 3. So when you multiply this out you get 30x cubed, 3x times plus x gives 3x squared and 3x times minus 3 gives the minus 9x. Now we look at this factor and ask ourselves does this factorize any further? Well it's a quadratic, quadratic expression, it's got three terms so it's a trinomial and in this trinomial if it were to factorize, then what we need to do, we need to put the 3x there, but we would split this into two brackets. So I wonder what we could put in these two brackets. Well, we're looking for two x terms that multiply together to give 10x squared. So you could try, say, 5x and 2x. You try combinations that multiply together to give minus 3, so you might be interested in trying say minus 3 and a plus 1, they've got to have opposite signs. Try this combination out, see if you get the plus x. Well what do we get in this particular one? We get 5x times 1 which is 5x and minus 3 times 2x which is minus 6x. So 5x minus 6x is minus x, so we're almost there. We want a minus x instead of the plus x, so that's an indication that we've got the signs wrong. Okay? If we've got the wrong value, we just switch the 3 and a 1 rounds and try that. 
And if that hadn't worked, try combinations like 10x and x and see if that gives you the right answer. Well, okay, to save time anyway, we've just discovered that what we need to do is just change the sign. So if we switch that over, we need a plus here and a minus there. You'll see now we've got on this one, we've got minus 5x and on this one, we've got plus 6x, which comes together to give us that plus x. Each of these factors doesn't factorize any further, so this is now fully factorized. Now what about number 7? Well in number 7 what we've got is two terms and the first term is made up of two factors a plus b times another a plus b. So a plus b is one factor, a plus b is again another factor. And when we look at this second term we've got a plus b is one factor and a plus 3b is another factor. So what we have is a common factor between these two terms. That common factor is a plus b, but we need to write it in brackets, okay? So we do that. There's our common factor, so we put it outside another bracket. So what do we need to multiply a plus b by to get this first term? Well, another a plus b, so we could write that in here as a plus b. Now, when we come on to this second term, we're multiplying a plus b with a a plus 3b. But we mustn't forget this minus sign here. So I need a minus and then another bracket with a plus b in. Now, because we've got this type of set of brackets, it would be a better idea if we made this a square bracket so it's easier to read. All right. Okay, well now all we need to do is tidy up what we see inside this square bracket. So we have that this is identical to the first factor, a plus b. And now we just need to clean this up. So we can reduce this square bracket to a curved bracket and we have a plus b. Now remember this bracket is being multiplied by minus 1. So you've got minus 1 times a which is minus a and minus 1 times plus b which is minus b. And now we see that the a's cancel one another out, they give us zero. And we've got this b here minus this b, which is also zero. And so we end up with absolutely nothing. Okay? So you can see we're totally wrong on that one. So let us just backtrack and we can see what we've got. Okay, now with this one. Now, in number 7, we've got two terms, and in the first term, we've got the repeated factor of a plus b, a plus b times another a plus b. And in the second term, we've also got a plus b as a factor. We've got two factors, a plus b and a plus 3b. So, as usual, check to see whether you've got common factors, and we have. We've got a plus b. So, we need to put that out in front of a bracket. There's our bracket there. Now in cases like this, I would suggest you write a square bracket actually, so we'll put a square bracket in. So what do we multiply a plus b by to get the first term? Well, another a plus b. Now for the second term, be careful here, you've got a minus, so we need a minus there. And what are we multiplying the a plus b by to give this term? Well, a plus 3b, so we need to put that in brackets as a plus 3b and then square off the bracket. Now we can clean this square bracket up, okay, so we we'll just put a plus b out the front and then turn this to a curved bracket, we've got a plus b, write that in, and now we need to expand this bracket. We've got minus 1 times each of the terms in here. Minus 1 times a is minus a, and minus 1 times 3b is going to be minus 3b. Now we can tidy this bracket up because a minus a comes to 0 and b minus 3b is minus 2b. So what I'm going to do is write the minus 2b then out the front here as minus 2b and then a plus b and then we've got what's, what's left. Well, that was the minus 2b. So 
that's it. A plus B doesn't factorize any further, so it's fully factorized. Well, okay, that brings us now to the end of this video where I've given you the work solutions then to 5, 6, and 7. And in the final video, I'll show you how to do 8, 9, and 10.